Hi everyone, it's Ramon Khan from RMK Six Sigma bringing you another episode where I go through a worked example from my book Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Okay, so even if you don't own the book, you can still download the data set we're going to be going through uh, from my website rmk6sigma.com. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up or subscribe. Here we have the section on the general linear model or the ANOVA GLM which is section 8.6 in the book. <clears throat> so the GLM is in the classic menus only at the moment. Hopefully Minitab will bring it into the assistant and then we'll have a really great graphical tool to use again. <clears throat> so the function of the general linear model is used to build a model of significant terms that have an effect on a response variable. Sample size, there's no power and sample size procedure associated with the GLM at the moment. However, we must have sufficient data across the factors for Minitab to solve the necessary simultaneous equations, and you'll see what I mean when we look at the data. So data type and format, the response must be uh, con a continuous variable. Factors can be discrete, numeric, or continuous data, uh, although the book that I've got does not cover continuous data in the Greenbelt version. So factors can be fixed or random, and then considerations design can be crossed nested, balanced or unbalanced. And prior to going into the GLM, because it is from the classic menus, I do recommend that we do some sort of graphical interpretation of the data as shown in this example before we begin the GLM. And then the model must be validated using residuals. Okay, so the GLM, as you can see, does a lot of stuff in terms of factors and terms of design, but there's a lot of terms there you might not have seen there before, like crossed, nested, fixed, random, but these are all explained in the introductory section 8.6 within the book. So I'm sort of kind of asking you to buy the book or read the book and then you'll understand those terms if you don't know them already. But let's go into the example to start off with. So this is example 8.6.1 if you want to download the data from rmk6sigma.com and it's called The Strolling Dead. Nothing to do with The Walking Dead, which is a fantastic TV show that I really like. The name uh, is purely coincidentally close to The Walking Dead. Anyway, apart from that now. So a software house wants to examine the survivability of the first 10 levels of their new survival horror game, The Strolling Dead. They recognise that two factors are important to model, the skill level of the player and the weapon used. Okay, so they've collected uh, data and they want you firstly to present conclusions from the main effects plot and interaction plots and also a multi-vary chart. So that's the graphical analysis that I was talking about. They then want you to use the GLM procedure to tell them which factors in interactions are significant to the response survivability. Right, so let's have a look at the data which I've already downloaded. And here we have three columns of data. So the first two are the factors, uh, weapon and skill level, and the third column is our continuous response data, which is survivability percentage. It's your chance of surviving the first 10 levels. So weapon is a fixed factor, and it has three levels, knife, sword, gun, and they're repeated all the way down. Uh, so there's uh, knife appears nine times. We then have skill level, and skill level also has three levels, expert, competent and noob. So they appear three times each as well. So we've got three times three equals nine and we've got three repeats of the whole thing. So we have 27 data points in total. Now what we want is GLM, is the GLM to tell us if changes in the levels of the factor are having a significant response on survivability. We also want to know if there's any interactions present i.e. when you get a certain combination of factors, does it give you a higher or lower response than you expect? Then we want the GLM to form a regression equation for us so we can use it in the future to model responses. And then we also need to know the strength of that equation. Right, so we can do that by either looking up and down the data, or to start off with, we can make some graphs and uh, see what the graphs tell us. Now we're going to make three graphs. So the first two that we're going to do make are kind of work together, and they're the main effects plot and the interactions plot. So two very common graphs for the GLM. And then we're going to make a multivary chart. So the multivary chart is used 
probably not when you, you know, don't want to use the ME plot and the interactions plot. So it's kind of used on its own. So three plots there for us to have a look at. So we're going to start with those now and make the main effects plot. So we go stat, ANOVA, main effects plot. Let's click on that and the menu comes up. Our response is survivability. And we've got two factors, weapon and skill level. Easy as that. Click OK to form the plot. So we have our main effects plot and to be honest I don't like the look of it. I want our factor levels to be the same in the same order as on the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to draw it again. And this is a very good skill to learn and uh, you'll be a bit of a, a mini tab magician if you know how to do this which is to reorder categorical variables on a graph. So to do that I'm going to go back to the project window click into the weapon column right click then select column properties value order and I'm going to say put them on the graph in the order of occurrence in the worksheet click OK now I'm going to repeat that for the skill level so first of all bring the active cursor into the skill level column right click column properties value order and order of occurrence in the worksheet click OK now I just have to draw the graph again so stat ANOVA main effects plot and the data is already there so just click OK and I form the graph again so now the uh, categorical levels have been reordered and that's what I want really the the lowest of least effective weapon first then the next sword then gun which is the best weapon and the skill level you could say is in reverse order the most competent first and first which is the expert so I should say the most skilled person first expert then competent then noob right okay so now we're going to have a quick look at the uh, the main effects plot so you can see there's two panes one for each factor they share the y-axis which is the continuous response data so that's survivability there and you can see the data mean for knife sword and gun so these factors have been isolated for just their effects on the response now okay so we can see that knife has the least probability of survivability then sword then gun whereas the expert has the highest survivability rating then competent then noob okay the dashed line across the middle is the mean for all the data okay so you can see that and the having the sword will make you above average and so will the gun and being competent is just on the average line okay but we don't know if any of our conclusions there are significant this is just what we're judging by looking at the plots we have to do the GLM to know if they are statistically significant another thing that we can say is because the range because the range of expert to noob is greater than from knife to gun then skill level has a more of an effect on the response it's interesting isn't it okay so now we're going to draw the interactions plot and don't forget that it will be automatically reordered stat ANOVA interactions plot so survivability and then we're going to have weapon and skill level as our factors our weapon didn't go in put it in now actually I'll clear it first and then put it in again so we're all in the same order survivability weapon skill level click OK OK so that's the graph that you get the interactions plot has a very uh, different interpretation it's just purely visual so what we're looking for here is we're looking for the lines to be parallel if there are no interactions or not parallel if there are interactions and clearly we can see here that the middle line which represents sword isn't parallel with the other two so there could be an interaction there that's all we can say at present there could be an interaction and all we're looking for is the line not to be parallel they don't have to cross all we're looking for is a certain amount of I don't want to say non parallelness because that doesn't sound right but for the lines not to be parallel <clears throat> okay so now we can make our third and final plot which is our um, I've forgotten what it's called now it, multivariate chart oh, sorry I had a, an, an old person moment there 
I'm going to click Stats, Quality Tools, Multivary Chart. Okay, it's going to put in Survivability at the top, and then I'm going to put in Weapon. I think actually I'm going to go for Skill Level first, then Weapon. So it's a Skill Level, then Weapon. Click OK to form the chart. Okay, that's the chart I wanted. So again, we have the primary factor, which is skill level, comes first, and that's shown within these dots. So we have expert at the top, then competent, then noob. So we have that pattern repeated three times within the variable for knife, then sword, then gun. So the red square represents the mean of knife, the mean of sword, and then the mean of gun. So what you can see clearly is that the, being the expert gives you the highest survivability, <clears throat> then competent, then noob, then also as the patterns shift upwards and the red squares shift upwards, that gun has greater survivability than sword. So that's the what you'd see in the main, uh, main effects plot, in the interaction plot shown there. Now to look for the interaction, we have to look for points that aren't parallel. Now if I just draw a line connecting knife and gun at the expert level, We can see that if you have a sword hour and you are an expert, your survivability is higher than expected. We should expect that point to be there, really, shouldn't we? Because if we bring this line down, we can see how it connects the other points. Yeah, and even for the noob skill level, the gradient is the same for the increase in these two uh, variables. But when you are at expert level, you get a much higher value than expected. That's an interaction. Okay, again, I don't know if anything significant. We have to do the test to find out. So we're going to do that next. I'm just going to go back to the project window first because you know I like to start from the project window. So we had a look at our data using a number of graphs and we made some judgments. We're now going to use the ANOVA GLM procedure to check if our, the judgments that we made, if they are statistically significant. Now, ANOVA has a new menu system in Minitab 17. It works uh, similarly to the new regression menu as well. So we go to Start, ANOVA, <coughs> excuse me, General Linear Model, Fit General Linear Model. Okay, we're going to enter our response, survivability percentage, and we're going to enter our two fixed factors, weapon and skill level. Okay, so that will check survivability against our fixed factors to see if they're significant. We also need to enter in our interaction term. Now this is the new bit, so we click now on model. I'm going to press control. And click on weapon and skill level to highlight both of those and you notice when I did that the uh, the add button became enabled I click on uh, add and you can see which says terms in the model the weapon skill level interaction has been added so I'm going to now click on OK and OK again to run an over and there it should take you to the results which are in the session window only so let's have a look through these so we start off with our method, our coding, which is minus one plus one, then our factor information, which we already know, then we have our analysis of variance table. So we ha here we have to look at our p-values to see if they're under our significance level to say if the factor is significant or not. So we see a p-level of zero for weapon, that's significant, skill level also a zero, and then our interaction term, p-level less than, 0.05 so all three terms are significant we don't need to reduce the model any further now we said that skill level was having a more of an effect than weapon on the response and we can see that in the F value which is greater for skill level than it is for weapon okay then let's have a quick look at our model summary so we get an R squared value of 97.85 that means 97.85% of the variation in the response can be explained by changes in the factors, which is a, a very good uh, fit for the model. Uh, the R squared adjusted 96.90 and R squared is uh, adjusted for the number of terms within the model. Okay, and then R squared predicted, which is new for Minitab 17, tells us how 
good the uh, equation is for predicting new values. We then need to have a look at our coefficients and the thing that we need to look here is our VIF values, value inflation factors and this tells us whether we have instability in the model or not. So if the VIFs were greater than 5 we would have instability in our model and we'd have to look at the factors we were using. But because they're less than 5 we're all good, we can carry on. Um, but looking at the interaction term we don't know which interaction term was significant. So I'm going to do something about that in a second. Uh, let's just have a look at the regression equation first. So it looks like an awfully long equation but it is quite simple to use. So let's say if you wanted to know the skill level for a, uh, an expert using a gun what you would do is change uh, anywhere where it said gun into 1 anything else will be 0 so the first term would be 64.11 which is the constant add 12.9 times 1 because it's weapon gun here that term would be 0 sword would be 0 skill level competent would be 0 until you got to expert and you'd make that a 1 again you'd go through all, all through the equation making everything either 0 or 1 and it just works out that's the uh, the percentage you would get then and we find we've got one um, observation within an unusual residual um, so again one's not no nothing to worry about okay so now to check the validity of the model we need to uh, check our residuals in our four-way four, four in one residual plot and then we could also run the model again to have a look at which of our interaction terms was significant so let's do that click on edit last Okay, I'm going to go into results, I'm going to ask for the full set of coefficients, that's for checking which interaction was significant, click OK, then I'm going to go into graphs, ask for the 4-in-1 residual plot so we can check the validity of the model, click OK, and click OK to run the GLM again. Okay, so let's go to the session window first, go back up so you can see we've got a full table of coefficients now. Now if I have a look at the interaction coefficients and go down the table to look for the significant um, coefficients, okay, we've got two, so they're saying that the sword competent is significant and sword expert is significant, with sword expert being the more significant interaction. Okay, so let's now have a look at the uh, four in one plot. Okay, so then again, the assistant doesn't use residuals to validate models. It uses more how you set up the program um, and the report card. Whereas with an over general linear model, you have to check the residuals and the session window to check the validity of the model. So there's four plots to check here. I'm just going to very quickly go through them. So this is the residuals plotted out in four different plots. Normality plot, so we want these residuals to be normal and to fit under a pretty thick pencil and these are fine. <coughs> Histogram, we don't want any extreme skewness in the residuals, they're fine again. And versus fit plot, we want the residuals to be equally spaced around the zero line and no bunching. Yep, they're fine. And if the data was taken in time order, we wouldn't want to see any patterns in the versus order of the residuals. All of these four plots look fine, so we can validate the conclusions made in our model. <coughs> okay, excuse me again. So that brings our foray into the ANOVA general linear model to an end, which is good because I'm losing my voice. So if you like what you saw again, please give us a thumbs up uh, or subscribe. And again, if you want to see more details on the ANOVA general linear model, a few more examples to work through, uh, please buy the book. Thank you very much. See you next time. Mm -hmm.